What's up guys? I'm Laura from Reading in Bed and here's my very first Man Booker International Prize long list review and it is going to be for The Seventh Function of Language by Laurent Binet. So um, this is one of the better known books on the long list, I guess uh, because it has a, a larger publisher. I'd heard of it before the long list was out and uh, so I had fairly high expectations just because it has a pretty high profile and it sounded like a very interesting concept. Um, so the concept is uh, Laurent Binet took the real life events and many real life people but the, the event that kicks things off is linguist and philosopher Roland Barthes. Um, he died in 1980. He was run over by a laundry truck in Paris after walking out of a meeting he just had with a French presidential candidate. So that really happened and as far as we know it really was an accident but Laurent Binet thought well what if it wasn't an accident? What if he was murdered and what if he was murdered because he had in his possession this so-called seventh function of language um, and the seventh function of language is supposed to be some secret way of using words so that you can persuade anyone to do anything so obviously you know lots of potential for misuse for government to want to get their hands on it say a presidential candidate possibly um, and then uh, so that's kind of the central incident and then we have a police officer who's investigating the murder um, who doesn't know anything about linguistics or literary theory or any of that so he has to get a university professor to come help him you know navigate this world of academics and philosophers so the policeman and the professor are fictional but everyone else or, or most other people that they encounter are real um, they are people you may or may not have heard of depending on how familiar you are familiar you are with this stuff like Michelle Foucault, uh, Derrida, um, Umberto Eco is in there. Apologies for all pronunciation <laughs> in this video. Um, so that's the premise and I, it's meant to be a satire of kind of that intellectual philosophical linguistic world of the early 80s in France. Um, so this sounded really cool and it was. I did like the book but I didn't love it. It sort of um, didn't quite rise to my expectations so rather than give a straight up review I'm gonna recommend some other books that um, did hit the mark on, on some of the things I thought this book was lacking. Um, although I will say I do recommend it. Uh, I wouldn't even be mad to see it on the shortlist, but I don't think it will win uh, the Man Booker International Prize. So the first book uh, I want to compare to The Seventh Function of Language is this one, Searching for Petronius Totem by Peter Unwin. Um, so if these were eyeshadow colors, I would say this is a dupe. Uh, it's very close in concept and in tone. Um, this is a satire uh, of Canadian kind of literary and intellectual circles uh, in modern times rather than the 80s. But um, like very, very similar uh, kind of things that it's making fun of, just the setting and, and time is a little different. Um, the other difference, I guess, is that Peter Unwin doesn't really name names. Um, Laurent Binet, as I said, he uses lots of real life characters, several of whom are still alive, and he often puts them in very uh, kind of humiliating situations, so kind of brave in that way. Um, but somehow this book was just more accessible to me in a way, and part of that is just because it is Canadian, so obviously I'm getting a lot more of the jokes. I know that stuff was going over my head in the seventh function of language, and, and that's okay. Okay. Um, it's not really that where this book I think shines uh, more than the other. I think what I really liked about Searching for Petronius Totem is that um, by setting it in the modern day it um, it then can grapple with modern day issues. So both these books are very concerned with the death of the author which uh, it was a concept popularized by Roland Barthes who you know his murder kind of kicks off the whole thing here. Um, I don't think he's mentioned by name in here but certainly the concept of the death of the author and the death of the book is central um, to this but by setting it in the modern day uh, we get to kind of grapple with two very modern day issues one being um, the propensity for authors these days to get embroiled in various scandals and what does that mean as a reader like can you still enjoy the work when the author is sort of outed as um, you know either just a, a run-of-the-mill asshole or an actual sexual predator so we're grappling with that all the time these days particularly in Canlit um, and second Secondly, it grapples with technology. Um, that I mean, depending where you uh, land on that, 
there's lots of people who think that things like ebooks and um, and smartphones are killing the novel. I don't necessarily agree with that. Peter Unwin is more on that side, but it you know he looks at that through this book. So because he's able to grapple with very pressing and modern issues around the death of the author rather than uh, in Seventh Function of Language, it's just sort of like the concept itself. This book was a little more meaningful and a little more relevant to me. Okay, the second one, um, this is Son of France by Todd Babiak, it's another Canadian author, and this is the second in a series. Um, so this series is set in Paris, and uh, the time period is more like early 90s, but it's not that far off. Like this, the time and place is similar, and um, like the seventh function of language, uh, there's a lot of politics in here. And these books are more straight up thrillers, um, there's not sort of that satirical element in there, but what there is in here are characters that you will care about. Um, in the seventh function of language, I mentioned there's kind of the fictional uh, police officer and the university professor, and um, they are sort of used as a way in, I think, for people who don't necessarily know everything about uh, French linguists and philosophers of the early 80s, which I think is probably most of us. And, and it's really effective. It's not done in a way that's clunky or obtrusive. Um, it's really well done, actually. I'm not like faulting Binet for, for using those characters as that kind of device to get the reader in and like explain things to them in a way that isn't um, totally just exposition. Um, but they're never really more than devices for me. I never really cared that much about their journeys in the book and they do like they have both of them have their own sort of narrative arcs they uh have love interests and, and all this stuff but it just it just didn't really work for me whereas in these thrillers uh you know also political thrillers set in paris um the main character is named christopher cruz he is uh like a security guard, um, like more than a security guard, uh, he, like a very high profile and kind of secret agent type security guard who gets embroiled in like political um, conspiracies and murder and all this stuff. But the character is so well done. Like actually, I'm probably overly invested in this character. I'm like a little bit in love with this character and not because he's likable. He's not. He's very flawed and very unlikable at times, but he's just so well done and, and well written and, uh, you know, not just a literary device. He's a character you can really get into whether you love him or you hate him so for that reason these books I think will well I know <laughs> these books have already stuck with me they'll stick with me a lot longer than the seventh function of language simply because I got super invested in the character um, and lastly, I don't have the book to show, but I want to talk about the sellout by Paul Beatty so that uh, like the seventh function of language is heavily satirical, different subject, different setting, different time. Uh, the sellout is all about race relations in America. Um, but the the satire and like the wordplay is there in both books. And um, it just, it worked better in the sellout for me because the pace and the density of um, that satire and, and the jokes and the, you know, playing with words was just so relentless. And I could see that some people might not like that. Like with the sellout, um, things are going to go over your head. Uh, you're not going to get every joke. Uh, it might be like, it might just feel like too much. It's a bit impenetrable, but there's just something about that like relentless pace and just the feeling of it all kind of washing over you and, and just the cleverness and the intelligence of the writing um, that really worked for me. I, I love that book and I was so, uh, I mean, I read it after it won the Man Booker, but I'm happy that it won the Man Booker. Um, whereas with the seventh function of language, it has a lot of those elements. It's also very smart, very satirical, very funny. Uh, some laugh out, li laugh out loud lines in this for sure, but the pace of that is quite uneven. There are parts that are like totally ridiculous and hilarious, and then there's like some slower parts, and it, it's like just very bumpy and uneven for me, whereas the sellout just like, <laughs> you had to just grab on and, and hang on for dear life with that book, and I love that. Um, and the very last one I'm gonna talk about strangely is a middle grade novel. So this is The Assassin's Curse by Kevin Sands. Um, and I was reading this to my kids at the same time that I was reading The Seventh Function of Language. Um, and it's not so much that like, I think this book was better in any way than The Seventh Function of Language, but I just had to mention it um, because the parallels were, were so eerie. Uh, this is the third in the series and um, the other two were set in England in the 1600s and uh, it's all about this apothecary's apprentice who 
like in the seventh function of language, gets embroiled in all these murders and secret societies and political machinations. And uh, it's uh, a lot of it is done through code breaking like the apothecaries have to use codes because they have like trade secrets and proprietary stuff so christopher's um master apothecary teaches him how to break codes and how to you know solve riddles and how to you know look at things in different ways um and in the seven function of language decode encode are words you'll see again and again because like linguistics and semiotics is all about symbols and codes um but more than that, this was like, I swear, one day I was reading The Seventh Function of Language to my, you know, for myself, and then half an hour later I was reading this book, and on that day, both scenes uh, featured a chase scene through Paris across the same bridge, the Pont Neuf. Um, so sometimes I would get very confused as to what happened in which book, which was just so bizarre. So I had to mention this one um, in case you are either a fan of middle grade and want to try like an easier way into this sort of like murder mystery political code breaking kind of book this would be good or uh if like me you have kids and you want to try uh reading these at the same time or close together just because it's really fun <laughs> uh, i would recommend and actually the series is just really good i'm so glad my kids are getting older and i can read like actual novels to them now so um i think that is it as i said i would not be surprised nor would i be upset to find uh, the seventh function of language on the shortlist for the man booker international but i don't know if it deserves to win i mean i'll have to read some of the other books to see but uh to me it was fun it was entertaining it was you know it was good but i don't think it's gonna stick with me for very long and i think a prize winner should be something that just like kind of uh you know, smacks you over the head and, and won't leave your mind. Like, I, I'm already kind of moved on from this. Um, so that is it. My next review will probably be for The Stolen Bicycle because I'm getting close to finishing that. I would love to hear what you guys thought. I will maybe link a couple uh, straightforward reviews of The Seventh Function of Language below for you to check out. Thanks for watching.